Hello and welcome back, and that is right. Today we are looking at this, the WD Red Pro 20TB drive. We've already done a full review earlier this week, which covered everything from PC benchmarks to testing and NAS testing. But today it's a before you buy, or should you buy? Ultimately, should you buy the WD Red Pro 20TB? I'm going to give you five reasons why you should consider buying this big old drive for your system, and five reasons why you might want to give it a rip miss. Let's go. The first reason, super obvious, it's 20 terabytes. Come on, that's enormous. When it comes down to it, 20 terabytes of storage is still, even now after all my years in storage, incredibly impressive. Now, just to give you a bit of perspective, those of you that are into multimedia, 20 TB right now, over on uh, uh, filecatalyst.com, I was looking at 4K and 8K media, and a 20 TB drive like this, if you look at one hour, of media uh, if you look at digital cinema 1080p high quality uh, that's about three gig an hour 20 terabyte yum yum if you look at 4k 2160 uhd tv1 that's 22 gig of its highest quality per hour and if you're looking at eight K media, that's UHD TV2, a 4320 resolution, it's 32 gig an hour. So even at that scale, this 20 TB drive can record 526 hours, hours of 8K high-end media. That's 350 movies, that's 1,500 episodes of TV. 20 TB on a single drive right now is insane. Next one, really obvious, just all the little bits and bobs that go with the drive. I've just bundled them all into one. So we can go through all of them straight away. The Nasware. If you look at the Nasware 3.0, WD have been putting out on their red drives for ages. It's a geared firmware update for 24-7 NAS use. Fast spin up, fast spin down, endurance and system monitoring. What does that mean? That means you've got things like the 3D active balance that we, takes into account the drive if it gets out of wobble sync there. Then you've got things like the you know the build of the device. It's got nine platters at 2.2 terabytes per platter. You've got um, not just the vibration centers, but heat centers there all the way inside working all the time then you've got OptiNAND on board with this drive there's a small area of flash reserved for utilization with metadata and index data all of which means the drive is going to be even faster to access generally it's just a very well built NAS drive not just a good drive but in terms of NAS utilization particularly in that enterprise setting which this is designed for with those larger RAID arrays of like 24 bays and a rack mount the build quality on this and the software on board and its firmware gearing and tightness it's still a great drive through and through Now this next one's more general. When we talk about the performance of this drive, yes, it knocks out around the 260 mark, maybe even over the 270 mark megabytes per second traditional transfer there. So again, that's not unusual on the bigger drives we see these days, your 16, your 8, and your 20 TB. But the reason I'm raising it here is this consistently hit that performance point. When we tried it out on a multitude of devices with traditional um, one gig sequential read, it hit that number practically every time. The only time it didn't is when we were using it in a volume in uh, another setup where write was off the table and the drive was still being kicked by other things. But in terms of all the devices we used in PC benchmarking and just traditional transfer throughput, it ticked that uh, transfer point every time consistently. It's not just that it hit that performance point, that it did it consistently. And even in Atto, it held that performance threshold pretty much throughout the testing at that level. So again, great performance, and it lived and died by its uh, scoring there from WD themselves. This next one is something for people that have already been considering this and looking it up on compatibility. You may have heard me say it just now. This drive 
is, in my opinion, and in my own personal testing, compatible with all the NAS brands. Now, I say that because if you look right now at the time of recording on their compatibility lists, it's only Acer Store that lists this drive on their compatibility lists. Everyone else has still yet to add it, but it is compatible with all the modern NAS devices. I hate seagulls. It does its job, it does, that, it does those performance numbers, and it's just a case of these NAS brands still catching up in terms of certification and registering these drives as work. So the fact that it works on all NAS devices right now is a big tick in the box for me. Now for this next one, I'm gonna to have to keep looking at my notes because we're gonna have a lot of numbers there. But do you know that when it comes to the 20 TB drive, it actually opens the door to getting you better value if you're prioritizing storage capacity over general power on your system. Now to put that into a bit of perspective, say you wanted 60 to 70 TB of storage. That's a lot of storage, but you wouldn't be looking at a drive like this if you weren't already obsessed with storage. Now, if you look at conventionally how you would have hit that number in the last few years before this drive came along, you could look at something like a Synology 8 bay, the DS1821 or the versions behind it. Once you knock around and buy that, depending on the price, you're looking about a grand for that, okay? So you've got a grand spent on that. Now, it's an 8 bay. If you want to hit a 60 or 70 TB, you're going to have to go for like 10 TB drives, maybe 12s. But if we look at the 10 TB drives there, those drives knock around for about 300 to 330 each, which means that equates to somewhere between um, 2,600 and 3,000 pounds there. So that means for that 8 bay and those drives and to hit that, because remember, we've got a factor in RAID, you're looking at a spend of between 3,600 and 4,000 pounds. Now, if you were utilizing these drives, you could get hold of four of these. And again, they're about five to 600 a pop. But again, when you get your bulk pricing, and if you do buy the big drive there, you're looking at about two grand, two to two and a half thousand. Then you could stick it in a four bay. You can pick up these four bays for about 500 nicker, depending on which brand you go for, it ups and downs. So that means your spend is around two and a half thousand to 2,006 or 700. So the result is you can make a saving of a grand to 1,500 pounds by utilizing the larger drives in a smaller scale system. It's something which larger drives, because they spend so long advertising that they're compatible with giant rack mount arrays, people all too often forget that you can get away with putting larger drives in a smaller NAS and therefore appropriate your budget towards storage capacity rather than going for overall power there. And again, that's one of the things that I've always kind of recommended to people that prioritize storage over system power. Yes, the smaller systems have a tendency to have smaller external bandwidth, but again, if capacity is key, 20 TB drives allow you a nice way to reappropriate your budget towards storage capacity rather than on the box that's holding the drives. But it's not all good. There might be reasons why this drive and indeed 20 TB drives in general are not suitable for you. Let me give you the five reasons why you might wanna sit on the fence and give this drive a miss. Hot damn, that price point. Let's talk about that. Again, this is still a very new drive and there are of course hardware shortages out there, but this drive knocks around for about five to 600 nicker, depending on where you're shopping online. In some places, even more than that. That is a lot of money for just one drive. Now, of course, we can't just look at hard drives and their price without at least factoring in price per terabyte. With this drive knocking around on average for about 25 to 31 pounds per terabyte, it's still scaling on the same price point as the smaller capacities out there. But for other reasons that I'm going to talk about in a moment, that's still a big ask price-wise because 20 TB drives kind of lock you in to a certain enterprise business model, again, we'll talk about in a moment, that mean that this price point ends up being more to be paid than a lot of other NAS drives out there that don't carry a pro label. Ultimately, that price is going to be very daunting even when you factor in the capacity. That's right, as good as it sounds to have 20 terabytes, 20,000 gigabytes of storage ready and willing to go, it's still a lot of eggs going in one basket. If you're gonna utilize a drive of this size, you've clearly decided that you need a lot of storage. Ergo, this data must be important to spend that much money. Ergo, 
If you're going to fill 20 TB, you're going to need a backup, which means you're now going to need either another drive to work in a RAID, which is not a backup, remember that, which means this five to 600 nicker just became a grand to 1,200 pounds. But on top of that, if you want to have a real backup, so you're going to need an external backup, which means this drive's going to have something it needs to live in, factoring in a drive like this, means that you have to effectively double your spending, just like on any other drive base capacity, which means this drive costing what it does means that that double spend there is going to be hitting, again, twelve to maybe even 1400 when you factor in the enclosure that an additional drive would have to go into. As far as putting all your eggs in one basket, it has never cost more in every sense of the word. This next point harks back to something I said at my first downer point there, and that's, this is only available in the Pro Series. Now, why is that a problem? Well, several reasons. When you look at the portfolios of not just WD, but most hard drive brands, there was a time when they ran the same capacities on Pro and Non-Pro, and then it got to about the 14 to early 16 TB range, and for one reason or another, and again, we've talked about that in other videos, the brands shifted up their um, hardware patterns and you ended up with all of the smaller capacities being available on the non-pro series, but the pro series were the only ones that got the 16, the 18, and indeed the 20 TB. Some of them, even the 14 TB drives as well. You could only get them in pro series. Now, one might argue that's because the hardware architecture of, of these bigger capacity drives already pushes them into a pro bracket. However, with the WD series, there is pro and there's non-pro, but when you look at the pro series, um, 14 TB, w, uh, sorry, the non-pro WD Red Drive, the 14 TB, it's got 512 megabytes per second onboard cache. It's got 7200 RPM. It's SATA, it's helium sealed. It's, C it's conventional magnetic recording, CMR. It's still incredibly similar to the Pro Series drives. There are small additions, small gearing changes for the Pro Series to be in a bigger system and two years of warranty, but it feels like a non-pro version of this drive was a decision by WD rather than a necessity when you look at the architecture of the drives behind it. Now, I haven't got any real evidence to back that up other than what I can see and my gut instincts, but to me, there being a non-pro version of this drive isn't impossible to me. I think there are ways and means it could have been done. Now, maybe we'll see a non-pro down the line, but it used to be that WD would release a pro and a non-pro virtually at the same time, and that's something that stopped and something that I think has only got worse when it's come to the 20 TB capacity. That's right, it's been a continuous point over the last few years, but when it comes to buying WD Pro Series drives, ever since WD and Ultrastar was so you know marketed together at the same time, a lot of the time when we see larger capacity WD Red Pro drives, the instant instinct is to compare against the lights of the WD Gold and the Ultrastar series. Now, when it comes to the Ultrastar 20TB drives, if you look at the Ultrastar HC560, that is another drive that is around 100 to even $150 lower in price. It's a 7200 drive, it's a drive that's got um, 512 cache, it's got OptiNAND on board, ignore the NAS, we'll get to that in just a moment. It's got 2.5 million hours MTBF, so higher than the WD Red. It's got a 550 TB per year, uh, sorry, annual workload there, which is 150, sorry, 250 more than the, um, 250 more than the WD Red Pro. But the Ultrastar being a more affordable drive and still being available means that even though the WD Red uh, 20 TB is a good drive for NAS. I think it would be remiss not to at least highlight that the Ultrastar series can give you, in some cases, better value. Finally, it's one of the concerns that a lot of people who don't really deal with larger hard drives don't know about, and that's the sheer noise of these drives. Because there's so many platters inside and the drive is designed to work so hard, these are not the quietest drives in the world. Just to put that into perspective, in the corner there, I've got the DS920 Plus just in the corner. I'm just going to install this drive and then I'm going to run an, a heavy 
4K IOPS operation there. Now bear in mind, the test I'm gonna perform on this is a peak operation. What that means is, it is a test where this drive is going to be put to some of the highest stress it can be. This is not indicative of average use. This is what you're going to hear if the drive it, the installed was being used at its highest level. It's still gonna be noisy even generally, but wait until you hear it at peak. Let's get that in there. We've got a decibel meter there at the bottom of the screen. So if we have a little look, we've got the drive inside. You're gonna hear the drive spin up. And from this point, I'm not gonna say much until I put my thumbs up that it's the test is about to begin. Pretty noisy, right? Basically, if you do go for a larger capacity hard drive, particularly enterprise drives like this, that is the kind of noise we're talking about. Now, bear in mind, this is a small plastic NAS there. Some of you might argue that there's a lot of NASs based around this, and that's causing a lot of the noise. It really isn't the case. The whole system is gonna vibrate regardless. Even if none of those systems were on top, the drive on its own would still make a racket. And bear in mind, this is a plastic chassis NAS with plastic trays. Now imagine an all metal rack mount system with fans on the rear there, populated with eight, nine, 10 of these drives inside. That's some serious capacity to be dealing with. But this has been five reasons why you might wanna buy the WD Red pro 20 tb drive and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this do check out the full review and all of the testing on the video we did earlier in the week for me but maybe it went out a week ago for you guys linked in the description and of course click subscribe to learn more as we talk more about this subject and click like if you've enjoyed it there's a free advice section linked in the description and of course you can find links to buying this product and others in the description there that supports us here on nas compares otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time.